Okay, guys. Um, so we have this chair family over here. Now we will just go ahead and load it into our table exercise table family that we created. Go here, and it is loaded. Diner chair, and this is my family. As soon as I keep this family over here in the project, you can see that it is there in 3D and in elevation as well. Now I will just go ahead and rotate it. I just clicked on the rotate symbol over here as you can see and it snapped to the center and now I'll just rotate it. So this is what we want and this is the reference line. Okay. Oh, okay. So what we want right now is to place this chair at this center area like from this to this part and we always want this chair to be at the center no matter what the size of this table will be so for that we need to have a reference plane and you can see that whenever i come here to make a reference plane i can see a central line over here so this is also because there is a reference line and that has been set to the center and that is visible and that's why we can get this reference over here so i will just create a reference line and i can go ahead and lock this up because i have ticked marked this over here it got locked automatically then i will go on align dimension and then just create a dimension and click equal and you will see what will happen right now and i will just copy or i can also mirror this and create another chair and have another reference plane i'm doing this on purpose so that you guys can just follow me while i'm doing this i'm just creating this reference plane then again locking this chair now it is locked to this reference plane and again i will do an align dimension and to the extreme part over here and then equal so now these will be always at the center of this point and this point and this point and this point so you won't be able to mess it up no matter what the size of the table gets for example i'll go here okay we did this and now I will change the width of this table. Let's make it 3.2 meters. Can you see the table spacing over here is equal on both sides. You can have a chair again over here at the center if you want, but I just wanted to show you the working factor of how you nest a family and how a nested family works along with your entire thing. So now select these two chairs and go on mirror. So this mirror and you need to pick axis. Just click here and what, what will be your axis? You want these chairs to be exactly on the opposite side. Okay, so this will be your center axis and now you have four chairs. Again, go on align, select this and align it and lock it. Select this and lock it. So now these chairs will move along with the width of this table. Okay, I'll just show you. If I do it smaller, look at this. Isn't it a comfortable way to have a family which works based on what you are feeding it into? So let's make it 2200 again, which is a decent size, a good size table, a dinner table. Now, next part is what about the depth aspect? For example, the depth is 1000 mm. I will go here and change the depth okay i will make it 2000 mm look at this what happens of course no one wants their chair to be under the table like this right you want this chair to move along with the depth and adjust along with it 
Now I will show you why reference planes are important. For example, I just undid what I did over here. Now again it is 1000 mm. I have to make a parameter, uh, I need to create a skeleton again to move it in depth aspect as well. So I need to lock it. How will I lock it? By adding a reference plane. But from where should I lock it now? I don't have any reference plane left. I don't have front reference. I don't have any center reference over here. So from where should I lock it? This is why having a reference plane becomes very critical in a family because they are literally your bone. They are the reference on which you lock your family with. So I don't have a reference. What I will do is I will go in this family, in this chair family, you can do edit family or you can just uh, go on this side over here in property uh, project browser and go on edit. So you will have a reference level like this and you can see I have one reference plane that is define origin at the center and one reference plane is at the back. But I don't want to distance the uh, family from the back portion, but I want the distance to be from the front. So I will just create a reference plane over here. And make this reference plane as front reference plane and name it as front. Okay. And now I will just go ahead and load this family back into the table. Overwrite existing versions and its parameter. So in my in so so previously we didn't have any of the reference plane to reference these family and distance this family from this table. But now that we have added the reference plane in the family, we will be able to see a reference here. Can you see? So all the families have a reference in front, which will be very helpful for us to make a distance parameter for this specific family. And I will make a reference plane here as well. Now go on align, lock this and lock this. Similarly, lock this and lock this. Now don't forget to add a dimension parameter. Dimension parameters are your muscles. You can lock a muscles or make the muscles move. So that's where the dimension parameters come into play. So if you want the distance to be constant, like for example, 58 mm right now, it is at 58 mm. So if you want it to be constant, you can do this. Okay. Let's make the distance a bit lesser and constant like 50 mm. And I will do this. I will select this reference plane, select the measurement and make it 50. And go here, click on the uh, aligned dimension and lock it. Same you will do over here and lock it. And now, because you have given the reference and logged it to a reference plane and logged it to the front, and back reference plane of the table with a 50 mm constant distance you will see what will happen now i just change the dimension to 2000 mm and just have a look what happens in 3d and in elevation did you see the tables move along with the depth of the table as well similarly they will move along with the width of the table as well. So this is how you nest a family and this is how you utilize a nested family in a overall family. And for example, if I go ahead, okay, I will make this 1000 again and make this 2000. If you do this and load this family 
back into the project, you will see that there are tables, chairs, sorry, that there are chairs nested in it right now. And when you extend the chair move along with your table. So that becomes a very helpful and very easy way to place a table. But what if you want to hide these chairs? What will you do right now? Right? You don't have any option that you can put a custom table or something in front of it. For that, you can add a visibility parameter to these chairs. Let's go back into our family. Select these chairs. You can select all of them. All of them are selected. Now you can see your property browser. Scroll, go into the graphic section of your property browser and you will see that it is visible and it is checked mark. Okay. So you don't uncheck it because if you uncheck it, it won't be visible anymore anytime. You want to have a control that controls it and gives you the capability of turning it on or off based on your requirement. So what I will do is I will go here, associate family with a parameter. Click on this. Right now you can see like there is nothing over here. Go on new. Now this is the parameter property. Again, family parameter type. And now discipline is common. Type of the parameter is yes, no parameter. So this is another type of parameter that gives you a yes, no option or capability. So this is yes, no for visibility. Now I will just type in show chair. Okay. And where it is grouped, it's also you can something it is. It is also something that you can control. You can just click here and go on graphic and now it will be grouped into graphic. I'll show you how. Okay. And now these all chairs will have this visibility grayed out because it's been controlled by this parameter. And you can see that it has an equal sign over here. That means it is being controlled by a parameter. Now I will go here and you can see in graphic section, you have show chair option. Okay. And I want this to be an instance parameter because it might be possible that in one table, I want these chairs and in one table, I don't want these chairs. So I will make it a instance parameter so that I can have that independent control. So I will make it instance. Okay. Apply. Now I'm done. I'm sorted. For example, if you want to check how this family performs or how this functionality performs before even inserting it into a project, uh, Revit has given us a good option, which wasn't there in previous versions. That is preview visibility. I will turn it on. Okay. So now this preview visibility is turned on and now we can see how this family will perform in a family environment. Okay. So I will go here and these are like show chair. It is ticked on. I'll just uncheck it and apply. Look, can you see the chairs are invisible right now? And that's the functionality that I wanted in my family. And I will check it, check it again and it's back. Now let's load this family into the project and see that if it's functioning properly or not and how we want it to function or not. So I click on this. Now I have an instance parameter of show chair and I can manipulate it based on my requirement. For example, there are two tables, but in one table, I want these chairs in one table. I don't want these chairs. So I click here and check and apply. Look so simple. Now we have a custom table with chairs inbuilt in it, which flex, which go with the width and flex with the depth. And this is how you create a nested family into a family and manipulate it and how you want it to be visible in a project. So I hope you like this video. I hope this video helped you. I hope you understand the family environment and how to make a family better now. Next video will be 
more in depth about these families i will show you how you can make an array parameter for these tables and share i will show you how you can uh, add more uh, functionality and more uh, controllability in a family and also we will touch on to the formula side of a family so that will be a fun part but i hope this was very clear this is the third part of this series and if you like this series please go ahead mention your thoughts in the comment section and i'll see you soon guys bye bye take care